Hi, I'm Johnny from BikeWarrior.com and in this video I'll be showing you how to install your four-stroke engine kit on your standard beach cruiser. I'll first talk about the pre-build, showing you what comes with the kit, the tools and materials needed for installation, and the best type of bike to motorize. Next, the actual build where we show you step by step how to install your motorized kit on the bike. Your four-stroke kit should include your four-stroke engine with your transmission, chrome muffler with the gaskets, gas tank, fuel valve, and fuel line, chain outer pulley, 44 tooth sprocket chain guard, sprocket adapter assembly, engine mounting plate, which includes hardware, spark plug removal tool, heavy duty 415 chain, throttle grip handle set and kill switch, throttle cable, and miscellaneous bolts and screws. An adult sized 26 inch wheel mountain bike or beach cruiser are highly recommended. You'll need about 14 inches from the top bar to the crank to mount your engine. Now if these dimensions match your bike, then you're ready to get started. Installing the rear sprocket is pretty straightforward, but take care to ensure that the sprocket is centered and aligned on the rear hub. If your rear wheel has a coaster brake, unbolt the brake arm from the frame and loosen the nuts on each side of the axle to remove the wheel. A good tip is to flip the bike upside down on the carpet to keep from scratching the bike. Here we have it on a bike stand for a better view. Remove the coaster brake arm. Sometimes the coaster brake arm's nut is too tight. If it is, you should use leverage to remove it easier. Now fit the drive sprocket over the left side axle and make sure it fits properly. If it does not, you may need to grind or file the inside of the hole of the sprocket to get it to fit onto some bikes properly. The preferred method, although, would be to take it to machine shop and have it machined to the proper sizing. Place one of the rubber gaskets provided over the threaded end of the bolts on the opposite side of the sprocket. Cut between two of the holes on the other rubber gasket. Now place it over the axle on the inside of the spokes and align it with the bolts on the sprocket as shown sandwiching the sprocket, rubber gasket, and segment over the spokes. Gather the nine bolts provided with the sprocket and thread them through. The goal when assembling your rear sprocket is to make sure it clears the tire without going over and hitting the chain. This will be the most tedious part of the build, but with patience, you won't run into any drivetrain issues when you're starting to ride it. Then place the three metal retaining segments over the bolts. Before tying the sprocket bolts, it is critical to make sure that the sprocket is centered in the wheel. This is usually very easy to do because the center hole should line up with the center hub. Okay, so when it comes to the coaster brake arm, after you put on the dry sprocket, sometimes it won't fit and it'll hit against the, the bolts. What you're going to want to do is you're going to want to bend the coaster brake arm. And what I like to do is I like to put it in a vise, heat it up, and then just go ahead and push this back. I like to keep the vise about right here at this line and I just heat it up and it just bends right into place. Don't over bend it and when you put it on it should clear the bolts and like ours and we just set it on, it'll clear right over the bolts no problem. Due to the width of the four-stroke engine and gearbox, you will likely need to change the original cranks to the wide ones provided in the kit to keep the pedals from hitting the engine. If your bike already has the three-piece crank set, you can simply remove the two arms and replace them with the ones provided in the kit then reinstall your pedals on the new arms. You will need to remove the pedals from the bike to reuse later. Start by first gluing both bearings and the bearing housing. Place the bearing inside the housing. Screw in the outer screw piece to the crankshaft and install it on the bike. Repeat this process on the other side. Tying both sides securely. Once the bottom crankshaft is completely installed, 
Press down the crank arms and screw them in. Repeat the same thing on the other side. Some bikes may require pedal adapters or new 9 16 pedals like this one. Once you have completed the sprocket installation and the wheel spins freely without rubbing, go ahead and reinstall the bicycle chain and fasten a coaster brake arm if you have one. Locate the engine mounting plate from the kit and fit it into the frame as low as possible without interfering with the right side sprocket or chain guard. Make sure to install it as level as possible. You may have to remove the chain guard for additional clearance. The mounting plate is adjustable in length, but in some cases, the frame opening may be wider. If this is the case, spacers may be required along with longer bolts to make the mount fit securely. The mounting plate comes with three bolts altogether. The two larger ones fit on the side of the mount. The smaller one fits on top. Once you have the mounting plate all measured out to the desired length, screw in the top bolts first. Now, screw in the side bolts. Now, when it comes to mounting your mounting plate, it's good to be patient and have a level head because it can be a very tedious process. If the plate isn't level, it could change the whole outcome of the product and your bike and its performance. Okay now, as you can see right here, I have a second pair of hands to help me slip the engine into the cavity a lot easier. Um, it's always a good idea to have a second pair of hands to help you out throughout the complete build. And go ahead and make sure that your bolts are lined up with the bolt patterns on the bottom of the engine and you're good to go on the mounting plate. Once the engine is in place, locate the heavy duty chain from the kit and place it around the rear sprocket and the output dry sprocket of the engine. Hold the two ends of the chain together so that there's just enough slack in the chain to let you slip the chain off the rear sprocket without moving the rear wheel. Mark the spot on the chain where it needs to be cut. This can be done with the chain breaker tool or by punching out one of the pins with a punch and hammer. After you place the chain back on each sprocket, place the mesh link in from the inside of the chain and the keeper clip on the outside with the closed end facing the direction the chain will be moving in as shown here. Locate the chain idler from the kit. On most cruiser type bikes, it is mounted on the chain stay, as shown here. The tensioner is mounted on the outside of the chain, as shown, and should be adjusted so that there is no more than one inch deflection in the chain when pushed up or down between the seat tube of the frame and the rear wheel. We recommend a half inch of play. Spin the rear wheel and make sure that the chain travels freely and does not bind or slip off either sprocket. When installing the gas tank, make sure the inside of the tank is free of any dirt or other debris. If you see surface rust, simply use a small amount of gasoline to remove it and let it dry completely. Place the tank far enough back from the handlebars so they won't hit it when you turn and secure the tank down with brackets and bolts provided. Once you install the tank, screw in the fuel valve and connect the fuel line to the carburetor and to the end of the fuel valve. The muffler is bolted to the engine using the two bolts provided with the engine and utilizing the two gaskets and the heat shield. Use care not to over tighten these bolts as if doing so, they may snap. Remove the original handle grips and slide the left side handle grip onto the handlebar. All right, there's two ways to, to take off your grips to replace them with the throttle grip. One is to get your wet paper towel with soap and a screwdriver and you go ahead and just get a little bit of the soap onto the screwdriver and hold it in and just push it all the way down and kind of just work your way around it in a circle and pull it out and just get it wet again and continue all the way around. You should be able to just grab it and just twist and pull. And it comes out. And the other way is just get a sharp razor, but you have to be really careful. Just push it in and pull it down. Let's go ahead and just pry it off. If you want to keep it, 
and replace another bike with the grips that is one way and the other way it doesn't. Take the mounting screws loose from the throttle housing and place the bottom half onto the bottom side of the handlebars. And make sure your kill switch is facing up. So then you go ahead and put the other half on. And kind of just look and see where you want it. And go about halfway down the bar. So just pull it back a little bit. Just give it a little work. And then we'll drill it. Drill a 1 fourth inch hole into the top of the handlebars as demonstrated here. Thread the cable through the slot of the throttle housing. And place the top assembly back on top and tighten the screws down. Once you tighten the screws, the next part is connecting the electrical wires together. With this, you want to measure out and provide enough slack before connecting them. We find the best way to connect the wires is by splicing them together. Make sure you have electrical tape handy before doing this installation. Go ahead and cut the ends off the wires and strip them. The green wire from the kill switch connects to the green wire from the engine, and the red and yellow wire from the kill switch connects to the black wire from the engine. Place the end of the cable into the throttle arm on top of the carburetor and slide the outer cable jacket into the fixed arm and secure it. Make sure that the throttle turns smoothly. Route the throttle cable and kill stitch wire along the bottom of the crossbar and down to the engine and secure with small cable ties. Make sure there's no sharp bends that will cause the cable to bind or stick. Also check to make sure that there's enough play in the cable to allow your handlebars to turn freely. That's it! Make sure all your bolts are nice and secure, then go ahead and start adding some fuel. Alright, now that we have it all put together, just go ahead and put some fuel in the tank, pull the cord and go!